Hello, hello, my lovelies. Today we are going to be talking about Wednesday, which I know if you guys have probably heard about it, but it is a show made by Tim Burton about the teenage daughter of the Adams family. And we're going to be talking about that today. And I was going to have this review out the day that the show came out, or the week, I, I should say the week that the show came out. And everything, all my equipment, my mental health, and my physical health kind of took a crap on me. So that's what we're doing today. A review that should have been done, uh, just to say, last year. So without any further ado, grab your snack, grab your drink, and let's jump into it. Roll the intro. Welcome back. Now, if you haven't heard anything about this show, you haven't been on Twitter, you haven't been on TikTok, specifically TikTok, because it's everywhere, even still on TikTok. I can't scroll but like five videos before I see a Wednesday edit. That's how culturally impacting this show has been. So if you don't know what this show is about and you didn't care about it, which I'm going to go into that with my whole thing about this show, but if you don't know what the show is about, it follows a young teenage Wednesday Adams who is now going to the school that her mother and father, Morticia and Gomez, had went to called Nevermore. And there is a monster running loose. There's a mystery involved with that. There's also a mystery going on with something involving her parents. And there's also a mystery that inequivocably, inequivocably, I think that's the right term. Every time I think of the word inequivocably, I think of the twilight. I'm sorry. Every time I think of that word, I just think of twilight. So she's inexplicably, there we go. I think that's the proper word. I'm getting this. She's inexplicably tied to this other mystery involving the school and a prophecy of the school's destruction. So that is the premise for Wednesday and quite frankly, let me give you guys my background about this whole show, and then I'm going to jump into the characters and my final thoughts. But I grew up with a mom that loved, loved, my biological mom loved the Adams Family. It was the show, one of the shows that she grew up on. So of course, we had the DVDs, we even had VHSs of the original series as well as The Munsters, I Dream of Jeannie, I Love Lucy, like a lot of really old like 1950s shows because those were the shows that my mom watched. So in a way, I also grew up on these. <laughs> in a way, I also grew up on these really classic shows. I still love I Dream of Jeannie and sometimes I'll go back and watch the original Adams Family for a bit of nostalgia, as well as The Munsters. Like, these shows are now both part of both of these big generational divides because my biological mom had me when she was in her 50s. So, yeah. I feel like I also grew up on the original Adams Family through her. So, I've always been a big, huge fan of this franchise. And ever since the Adams Family and the Adams Family Values, which are the live-action movies starring Raul Julia, which... I am so in love with Raul Julia. Like, I loved that man when I was a child. Like, I love him. I still love him. Rest in peace to Raul Julia. I didn't even know he was dead. So yeah, I had to learn that. And I felt really sad. And this has been a big, huge piece of my childhood. And in recent years, I haven't really been keeping up with the Adams Family. Because their one was a lot of misses with things. And they're like... Ever since the 2019 movie, I just, I haven't been interested. I haven't been interested in the Adams Family. That's another reason why I would go back and watch all the older stuff. Because to me, that was, that was what the Adams Family was. And when I heard that Tim Burton, which is another sad case of a childhood director that I just haven't been that interested in. The newer stuff just isn't kind of it. I'm looking right at you, Dumbo and Miss Pentagrins. Even though I love the Miss Pentagrins book series because this is also a book review channel. Mm, that movie. Looking right at those films. 
which I know, which this is my hot take. I like the live action Alice in Wonderland films. I, I just think they're kooky and weird. Same thing with Dark Shadows. Dark Shadows to me is so bad that it's good and it's hilarious. I, I watch it when I want a good laugh. And I know in the, like the whole Tim Burton fandom, we hate the Alice in Wonderland films as well as Dark Shadows. But like Dark Shadows is very funny to me. And the Alice in Wonderland films... I just really, really love the soundtrack. That whole... Uh, Danny Elfman. It's it's Danny Elfman. It's Danny Elfman and the fashions were just so cool. But anyway, now that I, I don't want to get on a whole Tim Burton rant. So that is the premise for Wednesday. That is kind of my background with the series and how much I love this series. So when I heard that Tim Burton was going to be making a Wednesday show... I, quite frankly, was not that excited. I didn't even really kind of care. I seen that they had a Nevermore, a Nevermore website and they were looking for people to apply and that some people would get a gift when the show came out. And I was intrigued to that much because I was wondering, like, what kind of gift would they give you if it was like a code to, to Netflix to watch it early? That's what I I've really thought. So that's why I, I signed up for it, because I thought it would be really cool if I could review the show maybe before some people could or could watch it before some people could. Because sometimes I, I, I just think that would be really cool because I know some people get like early access to stuff. So I thought maybe I could win myself some early access and be one of those early access girlies. But no, they sent a box, actually, and... I don't know if I should put this at the end or at the beginning, but I'm probably going to put the box at the end. So that way I'm not going to bog you guys all down with that whole thing. Like it was just a gift from them for giving them my email and my address. So I wasn't expecting it to show up and it just felt really cool to kind of get some merch from a TV show that now is kind of huge. Accidentally, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and let's talk about those characters. The first character on our roster is, of course, the girl of the hour, Miss Jenna Ortega as Wednesday Adams. And I think that this casting, this isn't even the character, but I have been a Jenna Ortega stan since this girl was in Stuck in the Middle, which was a Disney Channel show that she was a part of. And I've always loved her when she's on screen. Even in that show, I thought that she was just so funny and entertaining. And so when I heard that she was attached to this project, she was pretty much the only reason I checked it out because I had seen her in Scream and other things previously. So I knew she had the chops to be Wednesday. But as soon as I played the very first episode, I was so much revived in my love for the Adams family through Jenna Ortega's portrayal as Wednesday Adams. Let me tell you, you thought Christina Ricci, which again is super iconic, and she is Wednesday Adams still to this day, but Jenna Ortega as Wednesday Adams is probably one of the best choices in casting I have ever seen. And I am not saying that lightly. Jenna Ortega as Wednesday Adams, I feel like is going to go down in history as just one of the iconic casting choices. She is so iconic in this role. She, at every single scene that she's in, she is putting in 110%. And then when I figured out that she had been filming while having the big C, um, that, while she was filming this and having to do so many things like learning German, learning the cello, like learning all of this stuff for this role just shows how much she was invested. It shows just, so, just how much she cared about this role and it shows on screen because this girl was acting her ass off the entire time her delivery as wednesday with that iconic dry sort so, sort of dark and messed up humor was perfect absolutely perfect jenna ortega if you don't watch this show for anything 
else. Watch the first episode simply for her betrayal as Wednesday Adams. You are not going to be disappointed. This casting was perfect in every way, shape, and form. And now I'm going to move on to her best friend, Enid Sinclair. Just a couple more things I wanted to add about Jenna as Wednesday is like, I like the fact that she almost felt autistic coded. And I like the fact that they handle so many things with her so well, because part of me did not want this to be like a Riverdale. Cause that's what a lot of people were saying was like, this is going to be the Adams family, but Riverdale. And I really hoped that wasn't the case because the man attached to that show is a problem and a menace to society as far as I'm aware. Yeah. So I did not want this to be another Riverdale or another, like, I don't know, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which I think was done by the same showrunner as Riverdale. And I feel like this show is trying to be what Sabrina was trying to be, as well as the fact that, like, she's smart. She knows what she's doing. But she also makes mistakes, and that affects her very heavily through the whole show. And I feel like that was just really good writing, really good balance on the part of the, whoever wrote that into the script. Or if it wasn't just Jenna acting. So, yeah. Now we're going to move on to Enid. I just wanted to add those last couple bits. I don't really have much to say about Enid. I think she's just really cute and really like a balance to Wednesday. I feel like that's what she was meant to be is like the whole sunshine and dark trope or moody and sunshiny kind of trope going on with like her whole thing with like colors and bright things and how bubbly and popular and sociable she is where, where Wednesday is just the complete opposite. And... I really like the fact that she gets to wolf out at towards the finale, and I just found Enid really, really cute. I found she was just a really cute character. I don't really have that much to say about her, but I thought she was just a little bit annoying in the beginning, but she kind of grew on me, so not much more to say about Enid. Now let's move on to Morticia and Gomez, which is a point of controversy, surprisingly, in the fandom, so... Let's talk about it. Morticia and Gomez. Morticia is being played by the wonderful Catherine Zeta-Jones, who I grew up watching on Zorro in the early 2000s. So when I heard that she was going to be Morticia, I didn't really have an issue with her. I didn't have an issue with her in the show. I think that her portrayal of Morticia is fine. I think she makes a really good Morticia. And now we're going to get to probably the biggest point of contention in the fandom, which is Louise Guzman playing Gomez. Now, with Louise Guzman, I didn't really mind him. I don't know if that's a hot take in the fandom, because the only thing I've seen the fandom saying is that, oh, he doesn't look like Gomez Adams. Y'all are thinking of the king that was Raul Julia, because the comic book version of Gomez looks like this. And now I'm going to put them side by side. I think you guys just wanted a hot Gomez. I, I didn't think there was any real issue with him as Gomez. I think he was fine. I even thought he was funny in a couple places. I didn't really see an issue with Louise Guzman, and I don't know what people are mad about. <laughs> I really don't, so don't come after me, everybody. I mean, I am a longtime fan of the fan of the Adams family. I have been my most of my entire life, ever since I was a little kid, and like I did not see an issue with Louise Guzman as Gomez. Why are we yelling? Why are we yelling about this, everybody? Why? Moving on, we get to the wonderful wonderful Principal Weems, who is played by Gwendolyn Christie, who you might know from Game of Thrones fame. And she said that she felt quite beautiful in this role, which if Gwendolyn Christie for any sort of reason ends up watching one of my videos and it be this one, you are a stunning queen, even in Game of Thrones. You are a stunning, 
badass woman. And also, if you could talk to the people who make Resident Evil and maybe play Lady Demetrask in a live action version, I would be much, uh, me and the Resident Evil fandom would be much appreciated. You are a stunning queen and we love you so much. Please don't ever feel like you're not beautiful because you are. You are a stunning badass queen and I love you. So her portrayal as Principal Weems, I feel like was good. I, I, I really liked her portrayal as Principal Weems and I feel like she was a much needed presence in this show. Other than that, I really don't have much to say except they dropped in these couple things about Principal Weems having been roommates with Morticia when she was at school and how she has a jealousy for Morticia and was like ripping pictures out of school books, like yearbooks. She was ripping pictures out of yearbooks and things and kind of implied that Principal Weems was into Gomez at one point. So I don't know what all that was about. It wasn't really explained or expanded on. And I'm kind of sad for that because I was a little bit interested. I'm like, wait, if it affected her this much, what what happened? Because they were also going into the backstories of Morticia and Gomez for an episode. So they hired all the younger actors for even Principal Weems for that whole episode. So why not? expand on that i thought we were going to expand on it when we got to morticia and gomez we didn't and i thought that was a little bit weird so i don't really have that much else to say about gwendolyn christie or principal weems but i found that she i found that her end was kind of sad because i felt like she was a much needed presence in the show but there's also conspiracy theories that she might actually be hiding as lurch According to TikTok conspiracy theorists, do I think that that comparison is a little bit weird? Yes, but it could have just been a slip of the co of, of, of the cosmetics department that day and they didn't put a contact in his eye to make his eyes look misty. I don't know. So, yeah, we're going to move on to the love interests. And oh boy, this is the fun part. So we get to Xavier and... Uh, what's what is his name? I don't even remember his name. I think his name was Trevor or something. Hang on. I think I have it written down What was his name? Trevor was his name Trevor? I Think it was Trevor Anyway, that's what I have written down on my notes. It literally says Trevor So Xavier and Trevor if I learn the real name, I will probably be popping it up somewhere on screen but I don't like either one of these characters. Let's be honest. I don't know why they included a love triangle. Jenna Ortega herself said she didn't want one. I don't know why they thought they had to include a love interest for a character like Wednesday Adams. Like, if any character in any IP does not need a contrived love interest, it's Wednesday. But I didn't really like these characters. I found Xavier's powers kind of interesting and they don't really expand on that. And I was a little bit sad for that, actually, because I feel like his powers were kind of cool. How he has these dreams, kind of like Wednesday has her visions. And I thought that was kind of something they might might have bonded over or his dad might show up. And that's why they were pushing him so hard to be with Wednesday. And then for Trevor, which fuck Trevor, fuck this guy. I'm sorry. I, I, I figured out that he... And if you guys don't want to be spoiled... Uh, I'm just going to leave this five seconds here for you to kind of skip forward. But... One, two, three, skip now. So... I did not, I figured it out, quite frankly, that he was the monster. I figured it out pretty, pretty easily. Because I compared the eyes. 
the eyes of the beast and the eyes on this guy. I'm like, they look very like similar eyeballs. So I knew they did that. But the reveal, everything about that character, I just don't like him. I just don't like him. I like his dad, the sheriff, better than I like him. I, 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 yeah. I, I, I don't like either one of the love interests. Let's just put it at that. Don't like either one of them. Yeah. Not much to say about them besides they were very unneeded. Very not needed. Now we get to Eugene, who was one of Wednesday's friends and is has two moms. He also has a power to control bees. And he's a bee collector. And I liked this character. I thought he was cute. And I thought it was really good that Wednesday kind of had a friend that she kind of latched onto in that like intellectual kind of way. And how Hummers stick together and Hummers don't leave each other behind or something. Like, that was just really cute. I, fe I felt like I really liked him as a character and his situation really pushed Wednesday to kind of step up and be a little bit smarter with things. So I see why he was needed as a character to further Wednesday's character development. But I felt, felt like he was a really cute character overall and I don't have any issues with the actor. Now let's move on to Christina Ricci as Miss Thornhill. Miss Thornhill, I kind of knew that she was going to be kind of a bigger thing later on as a character and not just like this sweet and caring dorm mom that they were kind of pushing really hard for her to be. But it was really good to kind of see the old Wednesday Adams go toe to toe almost like fight the old one, fight the new one. I felt like that whole thing was really cute and I felt like it was like a really cute thing for them to like include her in this and not just like a piece of legacy casting. But yeah, I don't really have that much more to say about about Mrs. Thornhill. And those are kind of all the characters that I found important except for Bianca, which I loved Bianca actually. I really loved Bianca and how she kind of starts off as like the first level boss for Wednesday. I feel like her and Bianca's kind of frenemy ship kind of thing going on was really cute and I really like how they kept taking pot shots at each other and their whole back and forth is just so immaculate. And they also made her... And I, this is a thing that I really like them doing, with, especially with like a character of color like Bianca, is they didn't make her just this really mean, rich kind of girl with like no substance. They actually gave her some real substance. And I really like that they kept her around because I thought maybe they were going to kill Bianca off because a lot of shows tend to do that with certain characters. And looking right at the Vampire Diaries for that one. The Vampire Diaries did that so much with black characters. Why did they do that with so many black characters? Whoever made the Vampire Diaries, can you explain why for that? Because I noticed it and it was just weird. It was just weird. Also, on the note of the Vampire Diaries, they mistreated my girl Bonnie and I will forever be mad about it. Anyway, moving on. Let's move on to my final thoughts about this show. Which, surprisingly, I enjoyed. I actually really enjoyed this. So I wrote down a whole thing for my final thoughts, so I'm going to go ahead and read that off for you guys. This show was good and was seriously bogged down by the love triangle that they forced between Xavier and Trent. Oh, his name was Trent! Oh, his name was Trent! I thought it was Trevor! Okay. <laughs> it was unnecessary and I hated the love, the love triangle. The guy's obsession with her is just not founded, and it's strange that they kept it going. I do wish they had focused more on the Adams Family mystery side of things because I liked that portion of the season, kind of digging into the backgrounds of the characters for the show. Also, this show has a lot of overlying plot threads, which I feel like they handled quite wonderfully, quite quite well. There, 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 there was a couple things that they dropped the ball on, but... Other than that, they handled it pretty well with as many plot threads as they had. There's an underlying message in this show where the whole town has like a theme park based off of pilgrims. And Wednesday has no issue calling out how they unalived the natives and took their lands. <laughs> and she says in German about how chocolate is essentially made. 
and how it's on like the backs of other people's but no one wants to talk about it. I felt like that was actually kind of funny. I liked it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just felt like that was great. It was like commentary, but like not commentary. I, I, I just felt like that part was funny. Or how she calls people in power for sugarcoating some of the very real and darker stories that they tell the public. And she stands up for that. And I like that about Wednesday is like, she was fighting for a lot of different things and was just like, had this basis of like morality and like nothing was going to cross that. So I, f I, I really like that aspect of the character and I actually really like this show. I don't think anything bad of this show. I feel like it dropped the ball on some things, but like it wasn't, it wasn't like a fantastic or life changing show, but I think that the show was good. I think the show was good, not great, but good. And I found it to be entertaining. Of course, the aesthetics are on point. It's Tim Burton. That's a given. I feel like the acting of Jenna Ortega is the biggest selling point and really sells this show as well as the mystery. Even though the mystery is kind of, um, you can point, you, 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 you can really figure things out beforehand of their reveal. So, I felt like it was really well done. I feel like I can't wait for season two because I had quite enjoyed it. And I'm interested enough in the characters and the mystery to keep watching. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys my score. And my score on Wednesday is an 8 out of 10. I think I'm going to give it a solid 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed this show. I really thought it was great. Now, if you sticked around to the end, what are your thoughts about this show? Let me know in the comments below. And if you guys want to see that whole box that they sent me, I'm going to go ahead and show that right now. And yes, this is in fact a back scratcher sticking up in midair from a tripod. I could open a podcast like this. <laughs> I just realized this looks like a very much like a podcasty kind of setup. But hey, you know, whatever works, works. I'm not exactly a rich YouTuber. I don't make that much. But here's the hat at first that they sent me. It says Nevermore Academy on it. It's by the company Cakeworthy, and it's actually very comfortable, although it does kind of cinch my head a little bit. So go ahead and stick that on. See, it's really snug. Like, it's really, really snug. But I like this hat. It's very nice and snug. It's good for those really windy days. Oh, there goes my bandana. Whoop. Guess we're taking that out. I guess we're taking that out for now. So, let's go to the rest of the box. It says, a special mess package from Nevermore Academy. Do not open until December 7th. Which, funny story, I accidentally ended up opening this because it showed up at my previous addresses. One, at one of my previous addresses and they said oh hey you have a package and i'm like i didn't order anything the only thing i got recently was my microphones and that was something that somebody bought me off my wish list so i wasn't expecting anything and it kind of scared me a little bit so yeah so now we're gonna go ahead and open it up and it says show your school spirit at accepted to nevermore at hashtag accepted to nevermore and then we got this letter here that says, Nevermore Academy Office of Admissions. Greetings. I am delight absolutely delighted to inform you that you have been accepted to Nevermore Academy. Congrats. Since 1791, Nevermore has been a safe place for a haven out... Ugh. A safe place, a haven for all outcasts of all kinds. Vampires, werewolves, gorgons, sirens, and more. We are so pleased to inform you... to that you have joined our unique family and look forward to seeing you develop to your fullest potential. Years ago, I won't say how many, when I was first admitted to Nevermore, it was the proudest day of my life. During my time as a student, I became the best version of myself despite a raven-haired roommate who tried to cloud my son at every turn. You really had to include your beef in the acceptance letter, okay. I developed resilience, confidence, leadership, and not to mention an excellent singing voice. At Nevermore, the possibilities are truly endless. I look forward to seeing you on campus very soon. In the meantime, enjoy the enclosed gift. Show your school spirit and wear it proudly. Principal Weems. So that's the letter. 
And then there's the tag from the hat. It says Wednesday X Cake Worthy. We got an iron-on patch, which I think is my favorite part of the entire thing. I really love iron-on patches. I don't have a piece that I want to put this on, but I really find that this is a really cool iron-on patch. And then I got a sticker that it has the same symbol as the hat. Which, I don't know what I'm going to do with these stickers either. And then we have a sticker that says, no rules. So yeah. That is like the first piece of stuff that I got that was kind of like almost PR. Like, I know they were just sending it to anyone and everyone. Because it was just whoever signed up for the email. But as a small creator, it kind of made me feel special a little bit. To get a, basically something like a PR package. So, that just made me happy. That made me happy to get, even though it scared me at first, which I guess was kind of their point, <laughs> was to frighten you a little bit. But, yeah, I, th I felt like that was really cool to get, and I really enjoyed it. So, I love the hat. I, 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 I've worn the hat quite a bit recently, just as I'm doing my research, or when I was actually finishing the script for this video, I was wearing the hat. And I had to rewatch the season one. So, yeah, that is what I got for you guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the likes and the subscribes. If you're looking for my Instagram or my Twitter, everything is in my link tree. You go to my channel, you click my link tree, and you'll find everything there. But it, some people have been saying that the link to my Instagram hasn't sent them to my Instagram. So, it's the random show one underscore. I will probably put it down here for y'all. And on TikTok, I am known as Spontaneous Weirdness. If you want to go check me out there. I don't really post that much on TikTok because YouTube has been taking up a lot of my time. But I'm, I I try to post there every once in a while when I can. Um, since I got a new phone, all my old drafts were actually deleted. So I got to find out a day when I can actually get back into cosplay and refilm all those videos. So, yeah. That's what I got for you guys. I love you all so, so much, and I hope you have the best day. Bye.